The first thing uh, is that Israel and Palestine is the center of uh, the contradictions of world, world capitalism, as the Middle East in general has been uh, the center of uh, the power struggle be between the main imperialist powers uh, historically and especially in the last hundred years, uh, Palestine uh, has become uh, the key, the key uh, to the Middle East. It's not because of the resources, because there's not m much there. I mean, uh, it's not because of uh, the, wa the water of the Jordan or uh, the few uh, uh, minerals that are available. It's not because of that. It's because of uh, the power balance between uh, the main imperialist powers in exploiting the enormous resources of the whole of the Middle East and keeping, keep, keeping it under, under check. And, uh, Palestine is uh, playing uh, a key role in all this uh, balance. Um, and therefore, everything that is happening uh, in Israel and, and Palestine has uh, an impact on the world situation and vice versa. Uh, historically, what has happened uh, you know, in, in the world situation has had a, a dramatic impact on uh, the lives uh, of uh, people living in, uh, in Israel and Palestine and in the area there. So it's very complex. Uh, because of this, uh, we've seen uh, in uh, the history of uh, the, the, uh, the, the conflict, uh, the way you can call it, or the, the, uh, yeah, the, the uh, crisis, uh, ongoing crisis in Israel-Palestine, we've seen very sharp turns in the situation. Uh, and uh, some of these turns are not determined or were not determined by, uh, necessarily by contradictions developing inside of Israel-Palestine. but. Uh, uh, from contradictions that were developing outside and uh, having an impact on, uh, on uh, uh, Israel uh, and Palestine, or Palestine before. And uh, going back to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the situation today, uh, well, we have seen a huge movement uh, developing uh, and a turning point developing uh, in, uh, in the spring, in uh, around April and May. Um, and I'll go back to that uh, in a moment. Um, this is uh, as profound as a profound impact on the perspectives for the Palestinian struggle for liberation, um, and has an impact on uh, on the world situation and the way um, U.S. imperialism and uh, Israel, uh, the, the Israeli state, are seen and considered by millions and millions of uh, people, even uh, Jewish uh, uh, around the world, reconsidering the oppressive role uh, played by the Israeli state in the light of these events, which have kind of thrown a different light uh, on, uh, uh, on uh, the mechanism of oppression uh, there. Uh, but for, for example, today, uh, well, now we are in a sort of quiet situation, uh, although uh, quiet is not really um, applicable to, to the situation in, uh, uh, in Israel or uh, in the occupied territories or throughout the region, but relatively quiet compared to other periods. Uh, but just to give you an idea of what that means on a daily basis for those living in, uh, in the occupied territories or subject to Israeli occupation. Uh, this is uh, uh, just a, a, um, a, a report that I receive every two weeks from uh, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Human, uh, Humanitarian Affairs. It's just uh, an institution that is dealing with uh, uh, the Palestinian refugees in uh, Gaza and so on and issues a fortnightly newsletter uh, making a count of what's going on. And just this count gives you an idea of what is happening, uh, on a, uh, what is the molecular process, what is, uh, what is not visible, uh, what doesn't make the news, um, uh, the big news, the big headlights, like Gaza bombing or uh, uh, massive demonstrations uh, on the Al-Aqsa uh, um, uh, or in the Temple Mount uh, in Jerusalem and things like that. What is not making the news is the ordinary life of um, uh, hundreds of thousands uh, and millions of Palestinians and Israeli uh, workers and youth. And for example, between the 5th uh, and the 18th of October, in a quiet period, we had uh, the killing uh, by the IDF uh, of a 14 years old. IDF is the Israeli Defense Force. 
uh, of a 14 years old boy uh, shot by, by snipers, uh, another injured. 159 uh, Palestinians injured by uh, intervention by the Israeli Defense Force. All this is in the West Bank or Gaza, which are supposed to be uh, independent from, from Israel. Uh, Israel shouldn't be intervening constantly uh, uh, in uh, these uh, areas. 159 injured, uh, 115 of those uh, were injured in protests against settlements uh, Jewish settlements in the West Bank. So uh, you have uh, this process of colonization uh, uh, of the settles, settlers coming in, uh, uh, establishing their presence uh, and uh, resistance around it. Um, and this uh, requires the intervention, constant intervention, interference by uh, the Israeli Defense Force in defense of these uh, settlers. Uh, in East Jerusalem, there have been protests because of uh, the bulldozing on, of uh, an Islamic cemetery, which was suspended for a few months, and now they started it all over again. All these are administrative measures uh, which the Israeli state is carrying out on a daily basis. Uh, 113 search and arrest operations in the West Bank, meaning Israeli police or uh, army entering the West Bank uh, towns at night, uh, going uh, door to door and uh, capturing people. Um, 23, um, um, yeah, 20, 23 warning shots of fire in the Gaza perimeter for people, uh, especially young youngsters, youth approaching, getting too close to the border, the Gaza border. And then there were 23 demolitions for lack of permit um, uh, operated by the Israeli forces with bulldozers and so on. All these in the West Bank. Um, seven Palestinians were injured by settlers uh, who were throwing stones or uh, shooting at them. Uh, and uh, one uh, settler was injured by Palestinians. And uh, 1,000, and this is... Uh, 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 seems a bit trivial, but it's an ongoing uh, war that is happening uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. 1,600 olive tree in the 15 days uh, illegally harvested or destroyed by settlers. Uh, and this is the harvest season for the Palestinian peasants. And, and that was just in two weeks. Uh, and this is ongoing, uh, continuous pressure, continuous harassment, continuous uh, oppression, backed up by the mightiest military machine you can imagine uh, and, uh, that exists in the Middle East, um, uh, which is uh, uh, the Israeli uh, defense forces uh, in, in the complex. So that's, uh, that's just an example of uh, what doesn't make the news. And it explains also how uh, exceptional the situation uh, that we faced in, uh, in, uh, back in, uh, in April and May, and the outcome of that uh, has been uh, from the point of view of the perspectives. Uh, so to go back uh, to that, we need to uh, take a, uh, a small step back and explain the context and how that uh, came about, how that happened, because conflicts, demonstrations, repression, uh, even Gaza bombings are not such an infrequent event. There have been quite a few uh, over, uh, uh, over the past decade. And uh, they didn't have the same impact, they didn't have the same uh, effect on the consciousness, uh, both of uh, the Palestinians uh, within historic Palestine uh, and uh, in the refugee camps and uh, internationally, and also uh, on the consciousness of uh, workers and youth worldwide in the way they regard, they consider this conflict. And uh, um, I think uh, we must say that um, once again it's international events that have an impact on, uh, on the situation. And that was uh, the long-term impact of uh, 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 the victory uh, in a faraway country, which doesn't have much to do with Israel, but has a lot to do with Israel uh, and Palestine, of course, which is uh, the United States of America. And the victory uh, by Trump uh, uh, in at the end of 2016. And uh, uh, so in that period, in these four years of uh, Trump's pre presidency, there has been quite a big shift 
uh, in uh, the, uh, the U.S. policy towards uh, the Middle East, Middle East and uh, the U.S. policy towards uh, Israel in particular. And uh, this shift was uh, produced a number of consequences. Uh, for example, uh, well, for decades, U.S. imperialism has been backing up Israel uh, uh, in, in any way uh, you can imagine, uh, by direct sub subventions, by uh, um, uh, supporting uh, militarily and uh, with training and with uh, and, and supporting in, uh, in every uh, possible way in the United Nations uh, Security Council, for example, to neutralize any uh, uh, te uh, attempt to um, uh, take a position um, against the policies carried out by the Israeli ruling class. Of course, even if uh, that was the case, and that, that was the case a few times uh, that that happened, uh, contrary position as, as expressed by the United Nations never really had an impact on the policies of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Israel, the Israeli ruling class. But what changed was that Trump threw out of the window even the pretense of a U.S. neutrality in the conflict. Uh, that was uh, always uh, part of U.S. policy, was always that of pretending to be super parties, to be above the conflict, in some way having a regulating effect uh, in, in between the two sides, the Palestinians and, and the uh, Israeli uh, state. Uh, and uh, obviously this uh, uh, pretense of being neutral was, was completely thrown out of the window. Uh, and uh, that had an impact on the dynamics uh, inside, well, international dynamics uh, and uh, the dynamics inside uh, Israel the Israel-Palestine conflict. For example, by emboldening uh, the Israeli, uh, the Zionist right wing. Um, the government was uh, in the hands of uh, Be Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, who just lost uh, recently the premiership and uh, was the longest serving um, uh, prime minister, Israeli prime minister for some time. Uh, but in general, the right wing uh, within Israeli society got emboldened, uh, feeling that uh, they had a free pass. They would have uh, complete uh, protection on part of uh, U.S. imperialism and Trump. Um, uh, that gave uh, way to uh, more aggressive policies on part of the government. Netanyahu felt uh, free to, to pursue this uh, line. Uh, and uh, a big rise in the settlers' movement in uh, the occupied territories, which were formerly independent, uh, the uh, so-called Palestinian Authority in the West Bank and, Gaza, and Gaza. Well, Gaza is excluded by, by the settlers' movement for a precise choice by the Israeli state. Uh, but in the West Bank, um, this uh, movement uh, was emboldened. Um, West Bank and Jerusalem. And then a number of, uh, of uh, uh, very strong provocations uh, that were carried out, changing uh, the context of the, of the conflict. For example, the proclamation of Jerusalem, which is a contended and has always been at the center of, uh, of the of the uh, conflict, uh, the status of Jerusalem. Um, and uh, Jerusalem was never the capital of Israel because of that, but was recognized as undivided capital of Israel by the United States, uh, which moved even the, the embassy to Jerusalem. Um, uh, Jerusalem is formally occupied, part of it at least, uh, illegally occupied by Israel, the east part of Jerusalem, according to the United Nations for what it's worth. Um, and then the approval uh, by Netanyahu forcing through uh, um, a law uh, which is called the Jewish nation state law that was approved uh, 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 forcibly by the Knesset in spite of uh, the Knesset is the Israeli parliament in spite of uh, widespread opposition even within Israel. Um, which basically stated that for the first time uh, what the reality of Israel was, but was never uh, really acknowledged in legal terms. And it's that you have uh, not equal rights between citizens uh, according to uh, their uh, nationality or background or uh, religious uh, background and so on. So Israel being a Jewish state means that all the others are not fully 
uh, don't have the right to be there in a way uh, or could be uh, made uh, redundant and feel, uh, feel like that. And in fact, in this kind of conflict, it's obvious what the outcome of this type of laws uh, it will be. Uh, th this had a huge impact on the Israeli Arabs, Arabs so-called, uh, which are Palestinians uh, who live uh, in, uh, happen to live in Israel because they, uh, uh, the process of uh, expulsion of, of, the, of the Palestinians uh, in 1948 and then in 1967 and throughout uh, couldn't be total. They, uh, it couldn't be uh, a, a clean slate, let's say. Uh, and a part of the Palestinians uh, were left inside of uh, the boundaries of Israel. Uh, and uh, a, bre a break um, with, for example, a, a part, a, an essential part of uh, the Israeli state's uh, claim to be uh, um, multi-ethnic, multi, uh, well, a, a full democracy, which was the alliance with a minority of the Palestinian population, which are the Druze. Uh, the Druze are a, a particular uh, a religious sect. And for some reason, historical reasons, the Druze uh, were uh, always part of uh, the, Israeli, uh, the Israeli state, even uh, uh, fighting the wars of Israel, even participating uh, and having, uh, expressing very high-ranking military positions in the Israeli army. Uh, so it's very complex, as you see, the, the reality of, uh, of uh, Israel-Palestine. And uh, the approval of the uh, nation-state law was a slap in the face of this layer that was, uh, had been loyal to, to Israel, to the Israeli state all throughout. And uh, uh, it provoked mass demonstrations of the Druze, led by uh, former IDF generals and all the, uh, all the lot. It was a huge break in their consciousness. Uh, and then uh, a, a process of heightened institutional pressure on the Israeli-Palestinians uh, within Israel as a consequence of uh, all this uh, shift in, in the international uh, political situation, <coughs> meaning uh, more uh, frequently, uh, more frequent evictions, a covering for uh, the policies of colonization, uh, disregard, total disregard for the Palestinian authorities, so-called uh, leadership of the Palestinians in any international talks, leading to international agreements, uh, sponsored by Trump, like the Abraham Accords, which were basically uh, um, an all-out, uh, well, uh, ultimatum against the Palestinians to, uh, to basically accept quietly their, their future destiny. Um, uh, by uh, reaching an alliance between the Israeli ruling class and the reactionary Arab regimes, uh, uh, so-called friends of the Palestinian cause, but uh, who never, which never really defended any of the, of the uh, rights of the Palestinians ever, uh, in fact have more in common with uh, uh, the Israeli ruling class than uh, with the Palestinian uh, people. And uh, that betrayal also was uh, publicly exposed, uh, had publicly exposed something that everyone uh, knew, uh, knew already. Um, the, the complicity of uh, uh, the Emirates, uh, the complicity, although they were not directly signing the accords, by the complicity of Saudi Arabia, which uh, 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 somehow uh, stopped uh, a step before signing these agreements because it would be too uh, problematic for them, but uh, were very favorably uh, supporting this uh, move and so on. <clears throat> and then uh, we have, uh, on top of that, the impact of the COVID pandemic, <laughs> which is also part of the, uh, of the uh, general situation uh, in Israel-Palestine, with Israel becoming a point of reference on a world scale for the vaccination program and so on. Um, and that highlighted again the different treatment, the different uh, situation within uh, Israeli society and uh, the conditions of the uh, Palestinians, especially in the occupied territories. I'm referring to them as occupied territories because that's effectively what they are. Uh, there's uh, uh, even the fiction of the Palestinian Authority has been completely uh, exposed uh, by, by these uh, past events. <clears throat> and, uh, and, uh, and also within uh, Israel, again, uh, the, sec uh, the second, uh, the feeling of being 
uh, pushed to one side, the feeling of being uh, regarded as second-class citizens uh, by the Palestinians living in Israel. Uh, and that, uh, that had uh, yeah, a profound effect on the, on the consciousness of this layer that uh, obviously was always oppressed, even, uh, even in the past, but uh, became more conscious of the nature of this oppression and how that is connected with the general uh, Palestinian uh, liberation uh, struggle uh, outside of the, of the green line, the green border of, uh, of uh, 1967 Israel, of uh, 1948 Israel. Um, and then, uh, and then there, uh, there have been uh, two imp uh, particular processes that are, have highlighted the, the movement within Israel uh, and uh, unified this movement uh, and unified a certain level of national uh, feeling and national consciousness of the Palestinians within Israel. And these two were uh, the attempt to, to uh, uh, lock out uh, the access to the Al-Aqsa Mosque uh, um, uh, during, uh, during the lockdown, uh, which uh, uh, provoked massive demonstrations and protests uh, and heavy-handed attacks uh, on the demonstrators by uh, the Israeli uh, uh, repressive forces, um, which became, that became the big news and made, uh, hit the headlines, um, of course. And then uh, the, uh, the highlighting of the, of the resistance to uh, evictions in, uh, in uh, Sheikh Jarrah, uh, uh, a Palestinian neighborhood uh, of, uh, of East Jerusalem, where uh, you know, this process is a long-term process of uh, uh, evictions and expulsions, uh, of dis uh, destroying Palestinian property, destroying Palestinian uh, uh, houses, replacing them with, uh, uh, def uh, by protecting the settlers' right. Uh, and, I mean, all this is done uh, uh, on a daily basis uh, by administrative measures. You have to uh, understand that. It's all kind of done through the courts. There is a sort of legal process. There is a resistance against it. Uh, but in the end, uh, obviously, uh, with few, very few exceptions, what happens is that Palestinians uh, lose and... Uh, um, uh, Israel, uh, the Israeli state uh, moves forward, one step forward, uh, another uh, small um, bit has been taken uh, from the Palestinians. <clears throat> so that became the rallying point for a massive movement uh, within Israel of uh, Palestinian youth and workers who were traveling to East Jerusalem to participate in demonstrations. Uh, a lot of Jewish as well, uh, although obviously a minority of, of the Jewish uh, um, solidarity movement, uh, of the Jewish youth and workers were involved in this solidarity movement. But there was uh, an element of that uh, that had resonance. It resonated also uh, across uh, the, the national uh, religious uh, divide. <clears throat> and then we have uh, the intervention by, by Hamas uh, in Gaza. Uh, with uh, the launching of rockets uh, related to these uh, uh, attacks by Israel. Uh, and obviously that in the past would have uh, just closed down the whole thing uh, because that's, uh, that's what happens. Uh, um, there is like a sort of mutual um, support uh, in a way uh, between um, Hamas in Gaza, uh, which is uh, uh, getting... Um, a, a, a heightening or a, a re, um, a renewing uh, their credentials uh, of uh, resisting against Israel's oppression and becoming the, the, the focal point of Palestinian resistance and so on, just by throwing a few rockets uh, across, the, uh, across the border. Uh, which uh, obviously these rockets cannot do anything. I mean, uh, most of them are intercepted by the, uh, the, by the Israeli dome. Uh, sometimes uh, <laughs> I have the suspicion, and I think it's probably, I mean, uh, uh, that uh, they even let some, some of these rockets pass through uh, in order for these rockets to make some damage. Uh, but it uh, doesn't matter, it's not, it's not so important uh, whether it's done on purpose or not. Um, and uh, what happens is that uh, uh, usually what, uh, what happens on the other side in Israeli society, everyone closes ranks again, uh, around the government uh, because uh, obviously there is this terrorist threat um, uh, which is perceived by, by ordinary Israeli people as, uh, as a constant threat. 
uh, to their to their life uh, lives. And therefore, this game is strengthening both sides, the most reactionary elements of both sides. <coughs> and Netanyahu played this uh, 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 card many times in his uh, uh, presidency before, his premiership before, and it worked somehow for him uh, by uh, fencing off uh, internal criticism, by uh, shoring up support, uh, and uh, emboldening his position in, in, the, in the political landscape uh, of uh, Israel, which is particularly uh, uh, prone to infighting and, uh, and uh, fragmentation and uh, instability uh, historically. But obviously this question of uh, Palestine and the Palestinians is a unifying uh, element that, uh, around the Israeli state. And whoever uh, is uh, in uh, charge uh, benefits from, from this. So Netanyahu deliberately provoked uh, this conflict, the bombing of Gaza, but that backfired. And that's what something happens, sometimes happens when, um, uh, let's say, uh, there has been a certain preparation, there has been a certain change in consciousness uh, because of what happened uh, in the previous period. Uh, the this time, the bombing of Gaza was not just uh, perceived as usual. It, it, it really highlighted the asymmetrical... This is not a war. Uh, it's not a war between uh, forces that can be compared even. Uh, it's uh, a unilateral uh, massacre that is carried out by uh, one of the mightiest and more uh, um, heavily harmed and... and uh, 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 the armies in the world, uh, the IDF, against uh, uh, almost harmless uh, population in the sense that, yeah, they, they will <laughs> try to defend themselves, they, they have these rockets, uh, uh, some uh, arm, armed organizations, uh, <laughs> there will be a resistance, there will be defiance, but in the end they're receiving these massive bombs uh, on, on top of their heads and there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, other than uh, showing defiance, and that's what uh, most of the Palestinian youth that were demonstrating uh, or were resisting uh, did in this type of uh, situation. So the Gaza bombing this time uh, was, uh, had a different, different effect from uh, previous uh, situations and uh, was, uh, uh, became an eye-opener uh, from uh, the point of view of the Palestinians, <coughs> obviously, uh, in, in different parts of the Palestinian uh, diaspora, um, meaning obviously those who were more affected in Gaza, well, they know what the score is. Uh, in the West Bank, also the Palestinians are quite uh, used to, to Israeli interference and repression. And within uh, uh, Israel, uh, I think that's the most important impact uh, because of uh, what the Israeli Palestinians had experienced in the previous uh, weeks. Uh, this particular uh, attack on Gaza had uh, a very profound impact. And then in the Palestinian diaspora, in the uh, refugee camps throughout the Middle East, in Lebanon and so on, and uh, across the world. And uh, the role of uh, US imperialism and the role of uh, Israel, the Israeli state was uh, exposed in the eyes of uh, millions of, uh, of youth who were uh, uh, in the process of being radicalized by these, uh, uh, by these attacks. And that affected also uh, a lot of uh, Jewish youth, by the way, and uh, has created a, quite a, a, ch a shift in the, in the, um, in the way uh, uh, Jewish uh, youth uh, who are radicalizing now because of uh, the general crisis of capitalism, because they, uh, of uh, uh, the movements that are happening uh, throughout the world uh, and in the United States in particular uh, have uh, perceived this, uh, uh, this uh, attack. And uh, therefore also had a huge impact on the solidarity movement across the world with the Palestinians, um, uh, which uh, in, in past uh, periods was quite uh, in a crisis uh, because of the mistakes also made by the Palestinian leadership in, uh, throughout uh, the, the past decades, which affected their position, obviously. <coughs> anyway, so um, 
And we have to understand where uh, this comes from. And uh, I don't have much time. I'm sorry if, uh, if I won't be able to go through all uh, uh, the process. Uh, we will write uh, more about it. There will be more material produced on Marxist.com so, uh, about the history of this uh, uh, conflict. Uh, but just to, uh, to give a general idea about um, where this is coming from um, and how important this change is uh, from the point of view of the perspectives. Uh, well, uh, the whole of Isra Israel's history is punctuated by wars, terror terrorism, occupation, uh, insurrections, resistance, uh, revolutionary attempts. It's very, very um, um, uh, tormented history, that of uh, Israel-Palestine. And of course, uh, we, uh, th uh, this discussion is important from our point of view also because we are in Britain and British imperialism played a key role in uh, creating this uh, festering wound uh, by, uh, uh, and directly creating, uh, directly participating in, in creating the conditions for this to, to uh, become what it is now, this nightmare. Um, and uh, that uh, goes back to uh, uh, the, the new world asset uh, created by the First World War. Uh, it goes back to um, uh, the situation that arose from the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Palestine was part of it. Um, and uh, uh, so was most of the Middle East. Uh, and uh, the British and French, who had nothing to do with the Middle East or the Ottoman Empire, but they decided that they wanted a, a slice of it, or uh, actually a uh, decide between themselves uh, who's going to get what at the end of the First World War. And that was uh, uh, done by a secret uh, pact. There are conspiracies, some, uh, not all the conspiracies that uh, a lot of people are talking about, but some conspiracies do exist. And that was a conspiracy uh, by uh, the British and French imperialists uh, to partition the Middle East and decide these different spheres of influence. And that was the uh, Sykes-Pico uh, 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 Pact of 1916, which, by the way, was uh, exposed uh, to, the, to the world uh, by the first uh, WikiLeaks, uh, which was uh, the, the Bolshevik uh, government taking power in Russia and exposing all the secret deals uh, of, uh, well, I in public, uh, secret deals by uh, the imperialists. Of course, the Tsarist regime was aware of this uh, in one way or another, and so they, they published this document uh, after the revolution. And in this uh, uh, pact, they decided uh, different spheres of influence, and, uh, is, and uh, uh, Israel and, well, not Israel, sorry. Palestine uh, was uh, to become part of uh, uh, the British spheres of, uh, sphere of influence. In uh, Lebanon, it was the French uh, who would take control, which uh, incidentally, that's exactly what happened. Uh, and a number of uh, different decisions, like for example, the Iraq and Jordan, uh, uh, all the Middle East was uh, divided between the two uh, powers. Um, so, Sorry, I lost, where is my notes? Ah, yeah. <clears throat> so the Sykes-Picot Pact. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, the British imperialists were preparing uh, for this scenario because obviously uh, they knew that uh, the, the Ottoman Empire was in crisis, it would collapse. Uh, they were preparing for this uh, and the war would uh, end up uh, with a victory uh, on their part. And uh, therefore, they were preparing uh, ground for uh, implementing this uh, expansion of their sphere of influence towards the Middle East. And they had two contrasting uh, interests, and they basically uh, pushed both. Uh, one was to reach a, a deal uh, with uh, the Arab regimes, uh, or the future Arab uh, um, uh, establishment of future Arab regimes, so keeping uh, the Arab um, uh, elites uh, happy with the perspective of some sort of independence. And on the other uh, hand was uh, to use uh, in their favorite tactic, which applied throughout the British Empire of uh, divide and rule, uh, use uh, the plans uh, and the, the Jewish, uh, the rise of the Jewish question on, on a world scale and the Zionist movement as a counterbalance as a, a counterbalancing force to base themselves in uh, um, 
uh, exerting their, uh, their uh, um, control over, over Palestine. And uh, that's the time when they issued, for example, this uh, uh, Balfour Declaration, that was uh, November 1917, which was promising to the Zionist movement, um, uh, and in and, and this way, uh, making it a tool of British imperialism. Uh, I'll go uh, just uh, in a moment to the Zionist movement. Uh, promising uh, a homeland for the Jews uh, in uh, uh, historic Palestine uh, <laughs> under the British uh, uh, protection. Somehow to promote and help them establish a homeland for, for the Jews. And at the time, uh, obviously, the Jews have some connection with Palestine. It was not totally arbitrary uh, connection uh, historically. Uh, and uh, the, the, the Jews were subject uh, for, for, for decades and, and centuries to uh, a special oppression, uh, in, uh, especially in Europe, um, which uh, had different moments but had quite a, a big uh, uh, harshening of the conditions of the Jews around the end of the 19th century and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, crisis that preceded the, the First World War. So in the run-up, uh, uh, the preparation for the, for the First World War, we have uh, an exacerbation of, of uh, the oppression of the, of the Jews uh, throughout Europe and the rise in anti-Semitism, um, in particular in Russia, uh, with the pogroms of 1881, where uh, um, uh, the Jews were given the, the responsibility of uh, the assassination of the Tsar Alexander II and uh, uh, were subject to the Jewish neighborhoods in Russia and the Russian Empire were subject to, to these pod pogroms, attacks, uh, uh, killings um, and destruction uh, upon them. But also in the rest of Europe, there was a rise in anti-Semitism uh, sentiment because of the um, attempt to, to uh, uh, by the ruling classes to use that as a way um, to cement their, their uh, control over society. In France, for example, there was the um, 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 uh, there were uh, a spread of anti-Semitism. Uh, in Germany, uh, as part of the general uh, process of, uh, uh, especially in the post-war, but even uh, before, uh, there was a rise in anti-Semitism. And, and therefore, the, um, uh, yeah, we have the first development of this uh, movement, uh, which uh, was basically relegated to a few intellectuals for, for a long period of time, but it became a force, uh, the, the movement as a reaction against uh, these attacks, against this oppression, uh, mounting oppression, the Zionist movement uh, became a, a, a bigger force and started to develop uh, uh, around those times as a reaction. So what the British imperialists did was to use this uh, as, a, as a lever for their own purpose. And uh, obviously the, the bourgeois leadership of the Zionist movement uh, saw that as an opportunity to pursue, uh, push forward their, uh, their own uh, um, ends in a very cynical way uh, by, uh, by accepting and, and uh, putting forward uh, these uh, wishes by the, by the British imperialists. Uh, in Palestine, there was a Jewish uh, uh, part of the population, um, but it was very small, about uh, I, I don't think it was more than 5% of the, of the population of uh, historic Palestine before the British mandate. And, um, uh, and the, uh, the, the Zionist movement started the process of uh, uh, enc encouraging and organizing uh, Jewish immigration in Palestine from uh, throughout Europe and the rest of the world. Uh, most of uh, uh, the people that were escaping from uh, these pogroms, for example, they weren't going to Palestine. It wasn't attractive to them. There was nothing for them there. Most of the Jews were uh, attempting to, to, to go to America, to the United States, uh, to, to Britain. And uh, there were uh, the majority of, of the Jews escaping from persecution were uh, moving uh, in a different direction than uh, Palestine. Um, so we have the beginning of the process of uh, colonization uh, of uh, Palestine under the uh, Jewish, uh, uh, under the uh, British mandate, which was uh, conceded to Britain by the Society of Nations 
um, in, uh, and started in 1920. Um, this, uh, this, this is the, the, the fuel of uh, um, uh, the conflict in Israel-Palestine, the uh, progressive expropriation. And basically, uh, it shows uh, from the very beginning how this uh, is uh, an explosive uh, contradiction that uh, will generate all sorts of convulsions and uh, grief uh, in, uh, in the uh, development of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the situation in Israel-Palestine. By 1929, we have the first bloody clashes, uh, although uh, tension was developing already uh, before. Uh, with, uh, uh, when uh, Jewish immigration reaches 150,000 uh, Jewish uh, people in uh, Palestine, three times more than at the beginning of the, of the British mandate. Uh, this immigration is done, uh, uh, by, organized by uh, the Jewish agency, which is uh, recognized by the British authorities, uh, by uh, buying uh, properties uh, and land uh, in, uh, uh, in Palestine. Uh, but that's not an empty land. It's part of the, of, uh, uh, is occupied by the existing population of Palestine. Although the property rights uh, were very uh, uh, debatable uh, because there, there was no, uh, n no such thing as a land registry uh, or a sh uh, sure property rights. Those who were cultivating lands were not necessarily the owners. Uh, the owners were absentee owners, uh, Arab, uh, but uh, maybe located totally in different parts of the Ottoman Empire, uh, in uh, Baghdad or uh, other important parts uh, of, uh, and, and just getting the rent out of it uh, without uh, the, uh, the peasants being even aware of, uh, of this situation uh, necessarily. So uh, uh, the buying off uh, of uh, uh, Arab land was uh, a process that was enforced violently and created a number of conflicts and the uh, piling up of contradictions uh, uh, that led to the bloody days of uh, August 1929. That's the real uh, beginning of uh, the whole conflict with uh, the most reactionary side of uh, the Palestinian uh, elite uh, throwing uh, against uh, the, the, the Jewish uh, colonies, um, a number of attacks and the killings, hitting also uh, some of the historical presence uh, of, uh, of uh, the, the Jewish in Palestine, for example in uh, Hebron, uh, with the massacre, Hebron's massacre that uh, creates a complete break between, in the relations between uh, the Palestinian and Arab population and the Jewish uh, population uh, historically. And uh, uh, the dynamic of this conflict is to fuel uh, nationalism, to fuel uh, the, the defense uh, call of, uh, of uh, uh, around uh, the Zionist organizations. Uh, and uh, snuff out any uh, possibility of uh, unified struggle against uh, the British and uh, uh, the occupation in Israel-Palestine. Uh, th this uh, um, culminates in 1936 with the uh, Great Arab Revolt, uh, which is a general strike uh, against British occupation. Uh, but uh, the in, in the course of this general strike, we have the strengthening of the uh, Jewish uh, institution, uh, of the Jewish uh, self-defense force. Uh, the British uh, occupying uh, forces uh, rely on, uh, uh, on the Jewish agency and the Haganah, the, the, uh, the military forces of uh, uh, the future uh, of the Jewish authority and, and the future uh, Israeli state in formation. Uh, rely, uh, increasingly rely on them in order to uh, police and repress uh, the Palestinian uh, uh, population. And in, and in this way they create, um, uh, let's say, uh, the fuel, the monster that then uh, 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 blows up in, uh, in their face uh, uh, later on. So uh, in the period of the uh, Great Arab uh, uh, Revolt, uh, 30, uh, between 36 and 39, we have the, uh, the growth of uh, uh, the collaboration between the British uh, forces, occupying forces and the Jewish agency and the Haganah against the Palestinians. 
Uh, but then, uh, and, and that is enforced also with an increase in immigration, Jewish immigration, which is fueling. By uh, 1936, we have 400,000 uh, Jewish uh, settling in, into Palestine, which is uh, uh, an increase, uh, enormous increase, yeah, of uh, um, the, uh, the amount of, uh, um, uh, which is fueling up this conflict. Uh, in, uh, by 1939, the British are preparing for the, well, they are uh, entering the Second World War. They need to find uh, um, a way to um, uh, consolidate their alliance uh, with uh, part of the Arab elites. And therefore, they introduce uh, a, a cap on uh, Jewish immigration, which will uh, provoke uh, an enormous uh, e uh, explosive struggle between uh, well, uh, they, they have alienated the Arabs, the Palestinians. At the same time, they are alienating even uh, the Jewish um, uh, authorities and uh, uh, organizations. And the Zionist movement starts a struggle against uh, the British occupation as well. This leads to uh, a situation that is uh, very complicated, where part of the, of the Arabs and part of the Jewish uh, established forces are collaborating with the British in the war effort. And another part is uh, fighting against the British occupation and uh, uh, carrying out all sorts of uh, uh, terrorist uh, attacks against uh, the British, which uh, will lead to the abandonment uh, by Britain of the British mandate. Uh, the, basically, they, they uh, relinquish, uh, by, nine, uh, by the end of the Second World War, uh, the British relinquish their mandate over Palestine and throw the ball uh, in the court of the United Nations. And that's uh, the situation that leads up to uh, the formation of Israel in 1948. Um, very briefly on the question of uh, uh, the Nakba, the great disaster and the establishment of Israel, because I think that's, uh, that throws light on the nature of uh, the Israeli state uh, and an understanding of what uh, is the dynamic uh, that uh, we uh, are facing even today. Um, in, uh, 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 while the United Nations, new, newly formed United Nations, are uh, discussing about the future of Israel-Palestine, uh, there is a plan for partitioning Israel-Palestine. This plan was uh, already uh, had been drawn up by the British before, but uh, was put to one side uh, in 1937. But it becomes now mainstream. Uh, the solution for the conflict in uh, Israel-Palestine is a partition. And this partition, uh, um, supported by the United Nations in uh, the Resolution 181 of November 1947, uh, is uh, uh, introducing for the first time this idea that uh, as a solution to the conflict you can have, uh, as only so only solution, you can have uh, only uh, two-state two solution, uh, a division, a partition of uh, Israel and Palestine into two states. And that's the basic idea that has been pursued by imperialism throughout uh, the, uh, the last decades and was already uh, present in uh, um, uh, the position taken by the United Nations at the time. This led <coughs> to a situation where uh, the Arabs in Palestine were not uh, organized, didn't have any structure, uh, didn't have any uh, armed forces apart from uh, some uh, guerrilla groups uh, that were basically set up uh, in order to defend uh, on a local basis but uncoordinated um, the, uh, the Arab uh, neighborhoods and villages. Uh, but the, uh, the Israeli, the future Israeli state was already present in an embryo, in a, in a shell, which was uh, the Jewish Authority, the armed forces connected to it, uh, the Haganah, and uh, these uh, auxiliary groups, which will become part of the, of the and, and, and become a constituent part of the Israeli state in the future the uh, Irgun Zwei Leumi and uh, uh, the Stern Band, which were terrorist groups uh, attacking the British. For example, uh, they blew up the British headquarters of the, of the colonial administration in Palestine in 1946, killing 91 uh, people, uh, uh, or assassinated the mediator of the United Nations uh, uh, in, uh, in the process, uh, so-called peace process. 
<coughs> so the, uh, there was this uh, huge um, uh, opportunity opening up to the Zionists uh, in, uh, uh, in a situation where there was already a discussion about partition, and they uh, uh, took the initiative and launched uh, a, a wave after wave of attacks against the Palestinian population um, uh, in the course of 1948, uh, shielding themselves under the umbrella of this resolution of the United Nations, which they accepted and the Arabs didn't, and provoking um, a massive wave of terror against the Palestinians. Uh, there are uh, uh, famous uh, incidents like the massacre of Deir Yassin with 250 uh, children, women, and uh, people uh, taken house door to door by this is uh, uh, this uh, Irgun Zvaileumi, um, led by one of the future leaders of Israel, uh, Begin, uh, who became prime minister uh, later on, um, and, and killed. Uh, uh, there, was, uh, there were attacks on uh, Palestinian neighborhoods, uh, hundreds of people being killed uh, with uh, the aim of uh, pushing them out and achieve um, what actually was achieved. Uh, the proclamation of Israel was uh, based on uh, the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians, uh, the expulsion of 725,000 Palestinians, according to official uh, estimates of the United Nations, um, that were pushed out uh, uh, from the territories that were taken under the control of the, of the uh, newborn Israeli state. The declaration of independence, so-called for the Israeli, uh, was, uh, became uh, the Nakba, the disaster, the um, uh, defeat uh, for the Palestinians. And the establishment of Israel uh, is, uh, is based on uh, uh, this uh, unprecedented, um, uh, for the scale, unprecedented operation of uh, ethnic cleansing. Israel consolidated afterwards uh, in many ways. Um, and uh, the situation that we are living now is uh, uh, um, a different situation uh, because uh, part of uh, 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 the outcome of um, the conflict that we have seen over the, past, uh, over the past decade in particular is that uh, this idea that you can have uh, two states as a solution for, uh, for this conflict is, uh, has been completely falsified. On one hand, you have uh, the consolidation and emergence of uh, very um, powerful uh, and supported by the imperialists uh, throughout, uh, powerful military machine and powerful state within Israel, which is, uh, uh, will never allow the existence of an independent Palestinian state. Uh, on the other hand, you have uh, the, the, the development uh, a, a, as a consequence of the, of the rise in the Palestinian uh, resistance movement and the, and the uh, revolutionary movement of the Intifada in the, in the 19, at the end of the 1980s. The outcome of that was a sort of compromise uh, which allowed uh, imperialism uh, to step in and introduce this idea of, uh, again, two states uh, solution and the birth of the Palestinian Authority. Uh, this Palestinian Authority uh, established uh, as a consequence of uh, a huge movement, a uh, resistance movement of the Palestinians in the occupied territories within Israel and uh, in the Palestinian di diaspora, uh, was seen as uh, a potentially uh, game changer uh, uh, with huge illusions uh, on part of the, of the international solidarity movement, on part of the, of the rising Palestinian struggle and so on. Uh, but uh, uh, the balance sheet of, uh, of this, and uh, as we warned at the time, uh, the Marxists warned at the time, uh, is that there is no possibility of a two-state solution uh, for, on a capitalist basis for Israel-Palestine. What we have is one state that is uh, exerting a complete control over the lives uh, and livelihoods of uh, the so-called independent parts, the so-called Palestinian Authority, by intervening uh, by all means, and uh, with the aim of <coughs> continuing this process of uh, land grabbing and uh, uh, expansion of uh, direct control uh, by 
uh, this uh, colonization uh, uh, settler, settlers uh, uh, process. Just to give a few figures about that, we have the, the growth of uh, the population of uh, Israel, uh, which has been uh, uh, enormous over, over the past decades. From 650,000 in 1948, now we have uh, about nine, more than 9 million uh, people. About 20% uh, 20 are Palestinians within the Green Line. Uh, there is also growth of the Palestinian population in the area, obviously, in the occupied territories and uh, uh, surrounding and within Israel. So overall, there is a, a huge uh, process of uh, uh, population growth. But there is also a process of uh, continuous penetration by Israel, backed up by the, this mighty military force uh, and colonization of uh, the Palestinian areas, uh, which are, uh, the Palestinians are being uh, progressively marginalized and pushed out of. Uh, in uh, 1979, there was uh, almost no, um, and, uh, almost no settlers in the, in the West Bank, uh, about 20,000 Jewish uh, settlers uh, living in the West Bank. And now we are talking about uh, 500,000, half a million uh, settlers. That means that uh, uh, there are settlements, entire towns which are uh, in Palestinian territory in the West Bank. It means that uh, uh, these uh, are protected and defended by the Israeli police and defense force. Uh, they have uh, dedicated services, they have dedicated roads uh, that can be uh, used only by uh, Jewish settlers and not by the Palestinians. These roads are cutting uh, across, well, not to speak about the, the wall, the, which is dividing Israel from the West Bank. Uh, but uh, these roads are uh, effectively operating as walls, uh, shielding uh, or cutting off uh, Palestinians' uh, neighborhood from their own uh, lands, for example. Uh, it's impossible uh, even to cross them because uh, they're built in a way that uh, this is made as a, as a way of harassing, harassing the, uh, the Arab, uh, the Palestinian population of the West Bank. There is a maze uh, of uh, these roads that are cutting uh, through uh, the whole of uh, the so-called Palestinian Authority. Uh, in East Jerusalem is the same thing, and, and these are the focal point of uh, the present struggle. That's where uh, the, the struggle is, uh, cannot go away because it's, uh, this pressure is uh, building up and continuing every day. Uh, in East Jerusalem, uh, in 2000, there were about 120,000 uh, settlers, uh, Jewish settlers in East Jerusalem, uh, and now uh, there are uh, double as many, 250,000. Uh, and, and that is uh, uh, part of this process of evictions and resistance uh, that is uh, uh, developing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, just to conclude, because uh, obviously I had to skip a lot, and I'm uh, uh, sorry that uh, my management of time hasn't been uh, uh, so, uh, so good, but uh, there is so much to, uh, that, that we can say about this conflict. To go back to the general uh, situation that we are facing now and what, are, uh, what is the new uh, element in the equation. We have seen so many turns, twists and turns in the Palestinian res uh, resistance struggle uh, uh, over the past decades and now there is a big opportunity which is opening up uh, from uh, uh, that point of view. First of all, we have to see this as part of the general process of world uh, transformation, and world revolutionary crisis we, we have entered. <clears throat> Palestine is not isolated from that point of view. Israel is not isolated completely. Uh, they are part of the same process of uh, capitalist crisis everywhere. And this is having an impact on the conditions uh, on the struggles, uh, uh, struggle of the Palestinians. It is also having a, an impact in the, in the sense of uh, wearing down the authority and uh, wearing down the legitimacy of all the institutions, of all the leaderships, of all the, um, let's say, the uh, worked out mechanism of oppression uh, in uh, Israel-Palestine, starting from the Israeli state itself and the cap uh, ability to use the old tricks to mobilize the support of the, of the Jewish uh, population around uh, uh, the oppressive uh, nature of this regime. Uh, obviously, this uh, mechanism is very strong and can uh, have a bigger impact uh, in the future, but overall they've been undermined by the, 
by being exposed, by being more visible, by being more understandable, um, uh, and especially on part of the very uh, the, the the most the youngest layer uh, within uh, Israeli society, and certainly on on the part of the Palestinians within uh, within Israel. Uh, it is clear that the two, two states uh, uh, and the Oslo and Madrid agreement, which gave uh, birth to the Palestinian Authority, are a shield, are just a, a fig leaf, which is uh, um, a covering for Israeli occupation uh, of uh, the whole of, uh, of uh, Palestine. <coughs> and it is also clear, uh, become clearer the role played by the leadership of the so-called Palestinian Authority. Uh, which is divided. Uh, in the West Bank there is uh, Fatah and uh, uh, Abu Mazen or uh, Abash as the president of, uh, of uh, the Palestinian Authority and in Gaza we have the domination by Hamas. Uh, but all these events are exposing the limitation. On one side the, the, corru uh, the corrupt nature of the, of the Palestinian Authority regime in the eyes of uh, the Palestinians themselves who are fighting against uh, the oppressive nature of this regime. Um, they are just they're just there to police the Palestinian uh, population on behalf of Israel and uh, making some uh, privileges on top uh, of that for their own uh, uh, purposes. But also the limitations of uh, uh, Hamas as a resistance movement uh, because uh, Hamas doesn't have any perspective other than uh, uh, you know occasionally uh, building up some sort of uh, uh, formal resistance by shooting these uh, uh, these uh, rockets and then reaching some other type of agreement. It is exposing the role of all the reactionary Arab regimes in the area in the eyes of uh, their own population and in the eyes of uh, the Palestinians and uh, uh, Jewish youth and workers uh, in, uh, in the area. <coughs> and um, and it is also uh, exposing the mechanism of oppression and the role played by the Israeli state in the eyes of millions and millions of uh, youth and workers uh, on a world scale, which is creating the basis for uh, the Palestinian resistance movement to uh, be uh, once again back part, uh, in the integral part of uh, the general uh, revolutionary uh, movement of, uh, on a world scale against uh, capitalism, uh, imperialist oppression, and against uh, 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 all its manifestations, like in, in the case of uh, Israel, Palestine, uh, the Israeli state. Uh, so there is a, an enormous opportunity in the sense of um, a unified Palestinian uh, struggle, which was revealed by the 18th of May uh, general strike, uh, which was the first time it happened uh, since uh, the Intifada uh, of 1987, uh, and even uh, to a certain extent even more than uh, that wha what happened at the time. <coughs> uh, it, it, this unified movement of Palestinian youth and workers is key in order to win over uh, the support of uh, the international uh, revolutionary movement in, in the process uh, uh, of uh, radicalizing, of uh, winning over the support of the, of the revolutionary youth in the, re the rest of the Middle East, and also potentially in winning over uh, the, um, uh, that layer of uh, Jewish youth and workers that uh, are, will be moving or will be uh, moving away or uh, um, entering into conflict with, uh, uh, with Israeli capitalism uh, in the process. There is already a very limited uh, uh, solidarity movement within Israel against uh, these policies of oppression uh, in solidarity with the Palestinians. It's very, uh, we, we shouldn't um, overestimate uh, uh, how big this movement is. But uh, with a correct policy and a correct approach on part of the Palestinian resistance movement, uh, uh, this can be widened and, and become more and um, uh, um, uh, stronger and stronger in the sense uh, of taking away and uh, helping creating a, a divide, a fracture uh, between the Zionist reactionary machine of the Israeli state and the mass of the, of the uh, Israeli population. Jewish or uh, uh, Arab. 
uh, without, uh, without doing that, uh, any solution for the Palestinian uh, liberation struggle is impossible. Um, but uh, the precondition for doing that is a unified and, and bold revolutionary struggle on part of the Palestinians, which can uh, challenge their own rulers, can challenge uh, the reaction regimes in the area, and can challenge the uh, repressive machine of Israel and uh, throwing um, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole movement on a, on a completely different ground, that of re revolutionary action, and as part of uh, the general movement for revolution that we have seen developing uh, throughout the Middle East and in the rest of the world. Uh, just as an example, the enormous impact that, for example, the, uh, um, the revolution movement against Mubarak in 2011 in Egypt had over the uh, Palestinian and Jewish youth uh, in, uh, in Israel. Uh, there was uh, a movement uh, within Israel uh, against uh, the conditions of living, against inflation, against um, uh, low wages, uh, the shortage of housing, uh, which was a unified movement of the uh, Israeli uh, Jews and Israeli uh, Palestinians against the government uh, of Netanyahu at the time uh, in 2011. That was uh, cut across, obviously, by these dynamics of uh, conf the conflict, the underlying conflict uh, uh, with uh, Israel on national uh, and religious lines. But it showed what the potential is for the development of uh, a broader mass movement against uh, capitalism in, uh, uh, within Israel. But that, uh, that is important to understand. It, uh, it's part of a general process of radicalization and revolution uh, in uh, the whole area and on a world scale. Thank you.